For students at the St. Albans School, learning math and science and reading and writing is elementary. And sometimes, fluffy. Chicken hatch in 21 days. How do you know that? Because I just learned it by my own brain. Chickens, when they are born, they call them chicks. And then what they, when they first hatch, they use their egg tooth to poke it out. And it's called embryology. I thought they would be nice and like playing around when they hatch, but they're not because they're tired. Wow, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. You probably couldn't. Uh, play very much when you just hatched either, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> Every spring, the UVM Extension 4-H Embryology Project delivers 200 dozen fertilized eggs to teachers in Vermont. Children in preschool through high school and homeschooled students take part in this project. Who knows the science word for what the egg is called when the baby chick is growing inside? I'm going to, I want to call Haley Adams remembers the embryology project when she was a student at St. Albans City School. Now that she's a teacher, the project means even more. It's something I remember as a five-year-old being in Miss Lawyer's class, you know, having that hands-on experience um, of the chicks when they hatched, um, and then growing up and realizing um, how much actually goes into it and how much I can pull from the program to teach my kids in other ways, the science, the math, the literacy. So as a teacher, I'm realizing all these skills that are embedded in, in the project, and it's really project-based learning at its best. The 4-H embryology curriculum is open-ended, so teachers get to decide how they want to use it in their lesson plans. The only requirement is to make sure to follow the 4-H model of learning by doing, which for these teachers is the best way for students to learn. What they've learned about comes to life for them. It's in their hands, it's real, it's not just pictures in a book, so they just get so inspired and so excited. And being able to help with the process and just hands-on is the best, I think, for the kids. For me, just having them be able to um, you know, not only touch it and feel it and be able to smell it soon as well, you know, and be able to hear it. Um, it's the five senses, you know, really being involved with um, being able to um, teach. Opening a book or doing worksheets around this wouldn't, um, you know, be ingrained in the brain as much as the touching and the feeling and the hearing and the being responsible and I've got to go to school tomorrow because I've got to turn those eggs. Um, for some of these kids it's huge. and. Um, I think it's just those lasting experiences, being able to see it firsthand, that makes it really stick. They are nice. The 4-H Embryology Project is adaptable to any age as well as any subject. This flexibility helps teachers meet state and federal education requirements, or what's known as the Common Core. We're now responsible for teaching these five and six-year-olds about temperature and about technology and since the Common Core has been around you know as early educators we're always especially me as a kindergarten teacher looking for ways to make those things um, alive for five and six year olds. Many teachers use 4-H embryology to highlight another teaching standard that emphasizes science, technology, engineering and math better known as STEM. Lewis is using a microscope with his kindergartners to get more up close and personal with the eggs. I thought it'd be neat to use a microscope to try to find some pores on the eggshell and, and uh, maybe describe what's inside an egg. And some children had not even cracked open an egg before. Um, so that was a little bit uh, unsettling, you know? And I think that it's that hands-on, um, you know, dive right in, get your hands dirty, and and so I think bringing that into the classroom was uh, beneficial uh, in many ways. Martha Manning is the UVM Extension 4-H educator who oversees the embryology project. Embryology for these students is really their first connection and their first class at the University of Vermont. I think it's exciting to see the students get excited about science, um, we all know we need more scientists in the future, and I think it's just the hands-on approach really sparks their interest 
in science in maybe ways that they had never even considered as science. Okay, so let's take a look at even picture. though this is rural Vermont, we have a lot of people who have never held a live like chicken. This, I, they may see. never have seen a baby chick as it hatches. So it's important for them to see this part of the life cycle of a chicken, but it also gives them that connection to the food she's that they eat. But she's a hen, which means what? She's a mom. From science and meeting educational standards to life skills, there's a lot the 4-H Embryology Project offers teachers and students. It's also a great way to keep a TV reporter on his toes. Do you think you'd be a good mother hen, George? No. <laughs> Why not? Because I am not a girl. <laughs> I am a boy. <laughs> Very good, but you're going to take care of those chickens, though. Yes. I like it when the chicks hatch and we get to play with them. Is that the best part of this? Well, no. The best, well, it's one of the best things about it. But another good thing is listening to the chicks cheep before they come out of their eggs and waiting. It's kind of a surprise for when they come out of their eggs. So it's kind of fun to wait for the surprise. Tell me one thing you learned about raising chickens. That you have to they eat corn they eat like corn and stuff they eat corn and stuff inside the egg no when when they're hatched what's your favorite part of embryology uh, holding the chickens i like the chickens because they're really cute and they're soft you must like me cute fluffy and definitely hands-on there's a lot to like and learn with the 4-H Embryology Project. Embryology, embryology, embryology. In St. Albans, I'm Keith Silva with Across the Fence.